In today's video, I am taking you guys behind the scenes of the inspiration and final product of my latest retro rebranding on social media. I'm talking color palettes, mood boards, and more. So if that sounds good, then stick around. These boots are made for Hi, I'm Dante and I'm a pop culture obsessed social media coach and digital creator who's on a mission to help people grow an organic audience of dream clients one post at a time. For those who have been following me on Instagram and YouTube since January 2021, you would know that before early July, I had a completely different brand. Before we get into the nitty gritty, make sure you keep up with me on socials for more good stuff and check out my private Mighty Network communities, Icon University and Driven and Divine, which are all linked below. So why is rebranding important for not only business owners but for content creators and your personal brand. There are several benefits that come with rebranding. Refreshing your look and the vibe of your branding can help you connect with a new audience or niche, differentiate yourself from competition, or just Stand apart from the usuals, recycling micro trends of social media. It helps you stay current and also showcases a new facet of who you are as a person or business. I personally rebranded because I definitely wanted a different look and feel because I didn't really have a set brand aesthetically. But the first mistake I made back in January was thinking that branding was all about the aesthetics and that I could just DIY it. Big mistake. My previous rebranding was a light blue palette based off how I was feeling in the winter mixed with some color psychology. I knew that blue was a symbolization of honesty or loyalty, which I thought would persuade new clients to come in. While this did work for a while, I was starting to get really bored and got into different shades of blue in early April and May and experimenting with different content. I was just feeling like my content wasn't unique enough and neither was my brand. Then I fell into the path of Zara Studio. Zara Studio is a branding atelier transforming multifaceted people into multifaceted brands through brand development and strategic marketing. In working with Zara our studio as both a friend, client, and co-worker, we were launching a summer campaign for June called Hot Brand Summer. Through the development of this marketing campaign, we were all going to give our own personal brands a refresh. So I created a mood board on Pinterest with all the previous pictures that I saved before to use for content. And it was literally just light blue pictures. As we were going over each one in the following week, both co-founders Taylor and Fatima pointed out to me that my mood board was done incorrectly. I was like, what? How can I have done a mood board incorrectly? I do them all the time. I had just put a bunch of blue pictures and not what I was feeling or how I felt about my brand. They pointed out to me that my personality is not a light blue. It makes me look quite tame or boring when in reality, I'm a very energetic and comedic or cartoonish personality type. So this really made me sit down and restart. I went through every board I made on Pinterest and saved pictures that I truly identified with and found a couple common themes in my mood board. One facet of my personality is retro camp. I have always been an old soul with a futurist mentality. I like to draw from the aesthetics from the past, but I hold the same values of the present. I like textures, bright colors, and anything polarizing. So within my new brand, there is the whimsical references of the pastel utopian 1950s, gender blurring and social mod fashion of the 1960s, and warm palettes from the 70s. My color palette was directly drawn from a picture with gloves and a neon coffee table that I hope to one day have in a home of my own. Modern references of Mad Men, WandaVision, and Lena Del Rey balance the stiffness of that Hollywood glam aesthetic. The next facet of my personality is the high culture prestige taste for the finer things in life. I have always been fascinated with fashion houses and artists that break boundaries and to really just make pieces that start a conversation. My luxury rebrand can be taken from artists such as Yayao Kusama, Keith Haring, Malika Fabre, and Slim Aarons. These artists play with form, shape, and color just as I take on creative shape shifting in my content through a Warholian lens. This is combated with the same type of designers in the mid 90s, the supermodel era, uh, such as the 1995 Spring Versace and Chanel Atelier and Moschino's 2019 collection as they embody the same lighthearted personality while maintaining a classy overall nature. This is exactly who I am and I have a certain knack for the way I carry myself. The final inspiration for my rebrand is none other than my fascination in pop culture, specifically in the music scene. Music is my drug and when it's combined with visuals, it's even more infatuating. Thank God for MTV. I identify with music artists because they create worlds and transcend time. They have a message and give their all to touch as many people as possible with it. That is what I'm doing through my branding. Branding is not just aesthetics, it's verbiage, tone, core values, and symbolism. And these moguls had the same sort of personality that I could hopefully relate to and hopefully translate through my brand to potential clients and followers. So then we had several meetings to invest in some things, approve designs. This is what we came up with.
So let me go into a little bit more detail. I hope you like it. The font. For the font of my logo, submarks, and variations, I chose a font called Dahlia Bold. This is from a really cool website that Zara Studio provided, and I gladly invested in a more unique font than something that could be easily found. The font is whimsical, enchanting, campy, and Renaissance-esque. It was important that in my signature font I had some sort of movement in the lettering versus the stiff Prada or the inflexible and overused Britney cursive that I was using. The colors, muted neons and pastels. Neons are on trend right now, but the muting is less harsh to the eye and a warmer palette to stay on my page longer from welcoming and energetic content. Pastels never go out of style and are something that's not mainstream. I also like the color palette because it's almost like a muted rainbow. So I have a lot of flexibility in my content as the seasons change, which I was really concerned about with the light blue palette before. The logo variant and the submark. It's simple, it's elegant, creative, and it reminds me of a blob and a lava lamp. I have never had an official logo. I had a generic draft on Canva that we don't talk about. I don't know where to use, and I was embarrassed to use it after meeting several brand designers on Clubhouse. I was so happy to have an official uncluttered logo variant that still cannot be replicated through a platform like Canva from the font, and it can also be trademarked because it's not from Canva. Overall, my retro revamp is a really fun, can be an easily interchangeable brand that will stand the test of time and emphasize my personality as time goes on. I am so happy with how this turned out and I'm so excited to keep on expanding it, keep updating everything so I'm cohesive all across different social media platforms and flexing it today here in this video. Again, I want to give a shout out to Fatima and Taylor at Zara Studio for taking the time to help me with this rebrand and steering me in the right direction. So if you want to upgrade your brand or start completely from scratch, they are currently having a summer promotion that is ending soon for $2,000 off some of their signature packages. So if that sounds good, I will link their websites below. I hope you all like my new rebrand. I will see you in next week's video, which is how to be iconic 101, back to school edition. Stay safe, have a good day, and Goya.